Welcome everyone to our third class called Procrastination and this is part of our 10 classes series for our course Productivity. Hi, my name is Juan Llerena. I am a marketing consultant and also an engagement and motivational speaker. So let's start by defining what is to procrastinate. And to procrastinate, it means to postpone activities or tasks. These are activities or tasks that we need to do, that we need to complete, that we need to finalize but we don't do them, we rather postpone. So we have to identify why and what is the reason that we do this, right? Why we procrastinate. So let's, we're gonna talk about some of the reasons we have broken down this in groups and we'll try to address them one by one and then we'll find what are the strategies that we can use and utilize to avoid procrastination. The goal is that we all can become more productive. So let's go there. The first step, identifying the main causes of procrastination. Laziness, there you go. This is the very first one. As we go through this class, I want to invite you and to identify which one do you identify the most with, okay? And try to see, to be able to determine what areas of improvements you have and where you need to, to start working right away. So the number one that we have identified is laziness. We do not feel like doing nothing. We don't feel like doing that. I don't want to do that. We're not motivated. We're lacking motivation. And this is probably the principal reason why we are lazy because we're not motivated to accomplish anything in particular or to do something. There will never be a perfect moment. That's something you need to know. If you're waiting for that moment to find just motivated and all of a sudden excited about something and to be just perfectly ready where all the stars are aligned so you can get to start doing things, then that's never gonna happen. There will never be a, perf a perfect time. The time is now. Okay, but we're gonna address that a little later. So, if you are suffering of laziness, then you wanna start as soon as possible. The sooner, the better. The second cause for procrastinating is perfectionist. If you are a perfectionist, then we have to talk about that a little bit, and maybe that's the reason why you're procrastinating, right? Perfection overrides progress, because we're waiting again for all the stars to get aligned and we just put things in the back burner. Are you one of those that are waiting for something to happen, to have the perfect circumstances and the perfect moment to go and travel the world? Are you one of those that is never gonna have a child until you get everything ready and you have completed just about everything? Or are you one of those that is never gonna get married or that will get married someday when you have a house and when you have the perfect job and you have paid off your college debt and everything else. So if that's one of you, maybe that's because you're a perfectionist. And perfectionism is killing progress. Perfectionism is making you a procrastinator. For example, you have to organize those uh, digital files that you have in your hard disk or in the cloud, but you're not, you know that it's not gonna be easy and you're probably not sure that it's gonna be perfect by the time you complete doing that. So what do you do? Well, you'd rather not do anything. You keep it, again, in the back burner. You put it up for later. And that's a, a very classic uh, activity that perfectionists do. The third reason for procrastinating is to big project. Humans, all humans, we have a sense of accomplishment. If we do not see results, we start getting discouraged. Especially nowadays, and with the younger generations, instant gratification is a necessity. That's why social media is just so big right now in our society and how it's shaping us and the way we do things and the way we react and the way we feel about ourselves and about others is because instant gratification is just so important and it's just creating that need for people not to get excited about anything that is gonna take a little work, okay? So if you are discouraged by big projects that feel like daunting tasks, things that you think it's just gonna be too hard to, to get excited about because they're too large or too big or take too long. The recommendation and the advice is to take, you know, think baby steps, take baby ste steps and then start me measuring your success by accomplishing every step along the way. Break down your big project into smaller goals. So as you start accomplishing every single smaller goal, then you will start feeling more accomplished and then you will keep the excitement going and then you will be able to finalize your big projects and start and stop procrastinating. The key here is that you have to be careful and not start placing other projects on front of this project. You need to make sure that once you start, 
you finish. Decision making is that one of the reasons for you to, to be procrastinating. Questions, 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 decisions, decisions, decisions. And many of us, we just don't know, do not want to make a decision. Why do why we don't like making decisions? Well, sometimes is we want to keep everybody happy. We want to make sure that everybody is satisfied with our answer. And the, the reality is that in many cases, you won't be able to do that. Sometimes you keep from making decisions for your business because you want to make sure that you get every every single customer satisfied about the decision you're about to make. You can't just get everybody happy. You can't do that, okay? So there's no black or white. Sometimes uh, there's going to be some gray areas, but you have to make the best decision with the best information that you have available and with what you know at that moment, right? So if, for instance, we have a new product name and we need to put up some new packaging, but we don't, ma don't make a decision, then we don't make any progress because maybe the designers won't be able to, to get your input and how they have to conceptualize that idea to be able to put it on, you know, in a graphic, in a specific packaging to represent the product well to your expectations. Now let's find a solution for each one of these laziness, perfectionism for a big project or big task and having to make too many decisions, decision making, schedule it. Let's start by getting organized. You need to have a plan to help you accomplish your goal for the day. I have explained this before. When you wake up every morning, you have to try to draft uh, an idea of what your day is going to be looking like. If you have no idea, it's like sailing in the sea without a compass. You're just going to go whatever wind takes you to. And you can't allow that to happen. You have to own the day. You have to own your own destiny. You can decide how your day is going to go from the very get-go right in the morning. If you have many ideas, maybe you have too many and you don't know which ones you need to do, you will need to prioritize. But we'll talk about that in just a minute. If you don't know what to do in the morning, well, there's opportunities for you to continue learning, to continue preparing information, to getting you know new uh, ideas on how to promote your products and how to present your products and how to tell your story and how to build a compelling, good sales pitch, design your elevator pitch, okay, for trying to maximize all those opportunities. So the, the main thing is that you need to schedule and you need to use a block time technique to get this done. Another good technique is to start thinking of the consequences, whether they're positive or negative or good or bad, you need to create consciousness of not getting things done, okay? So first you have to think of the negative. So what if uh, you have a uh, make a resolution and then you need to start going to the gym to, to stay healthy, right? Let's say the goal is to stay healthy and you know stay in good physical shape, but you don't go to the gym. Well, think of the consequences of not acting. What is it gonna happen? Are you gonna gain some weight? Are you gonna be more tired every, every day? Are you going to be more stressed out? You're risking uh, some other health factors. So think of the consequences of not getting it done. But also think of the positive. How would you feel if you accomplish you know, going to the gym three times a week or four times a week or walking a mile every day? How are you going to look when you can go to your next vacation and lose those uh, 10 pounds that you know you, you, don't, you want to get rid of? How are you uh, going to reward yourself? So think of the rewards. For instance, if you are thinking of getting a better physical shape and you accomplish what your goal says, well, maybe you take the weekend off and then you just go and, and go hiking at a special place you've been wanting to go for a long time. And that can be your reward. So think, focus on the negatives for not doing it and the consequences. And then also think of the positive consequences of doing things. Now, if we take it more to a professional and a business level, well, let's just think of for instance, uh, your marketing campaign. Let's say your marketing campaign, it takes many different steps. There's a whole process that goes through through many different activities to funnel your leads and to turn them into consumers, into, into buyers. And right now you have to create some social media content. You have to create some content for your blog, for your website. You need to update products. You need to look continue looking for reviews for your products. You need to uh, make phone calls or send emails or send email marketing campaigns. You work on your SEO. You know, you're working on so many things. And when you get someone to be interested in your product or in your company or what you do on your service, wouldn't it be nice to be able to have like a multi-channel marketing autopilot program? So from the moment somebody subscribes to your, to your newsletter that you can get in touch with them and then just start releasing information that it will get them more informed about your product and then you can direct them to your website and maybe if you can measure where they're at and along the process and you get them to go to your website, you can track later on where they're in the process that at some point you will turn them into customers. 
And if you could out, you could set all those different tasks in autopilot, how much time would that would that save you? So the consequence, the negative consequence of not setting up an autopilot marketing campaign is all the time and effort you're going to have to do with your limited resources and your limited time. The positive consequence of setting up an autopilot marketing campaign, it will be to get more customers, to be able to scale your business because now you have more time to focus on those customers that are actually interacting with you instead of doing uh, too many cold calls or trying to guide them through the entire process, which has been automated. So if you think about it and you think of the rewards and how much time that's gonna save you and how much that's gonna simplify your life in the future, then that can be the motivation you need to stop procrastinating. Now let's talk about the uh, WBS and this is um, work breakdown structure, which basically is uh, decomposed in uh, you know, your big task into a smaller task, tasks that are not small enough that you break them down into smaller ones, a smaller project and into a smaller task. So you can start accomplishing one by one. And when you accomplish, you know, let's say the five or six stacks that make a project or a sub project, you know, and then you complete each one of those sub projects, then you complete the whole entire, entire project. So it's that idea of breaking down something and making it simpler, easier to digest, easier to process. And this is great when you are swamped with big projects and you think that they're unmanageable. Maybe they're too big to tackle. Maybe you need more instant gratification. So WVS is a great way to tackle those big projects. So you can concentrate in each one of the phases. For instance, if you are, if you are about to write a book, well, instead of thinking about the book, maybe just think of writing every chapter and every chapter is a, is a milestone. So you can celebrate small victories that will consequently take you to finalize the book, which it can be a much bigger price for you. If we're talking about personal terms and we're talking about your health and you decide that you're gonna be running, uh, you know, a 5K, and but nowadays you don't run anything. You don't even run a uh, hundred meters, or you know, not even a quarter mile. So what you need to concentrate instead of focusing on the five 5K, maybe you can concentrate in running five minutes every day, five minutes every day, and bumping that up seven minutes every day for the second week, eight minutes, you know, the next week, ten minutes the next time, and the next time you know you already run. 5k you run three miles two months time for instance so you're celebrating smaller milestones but that they will be taking you to be able to complete the bigger project to be able to to take care of those big projects that you've been procrastinating because they seem too large so you just concentrate on one task at a time or in one project or in one sub project at a time so time blocking is also a task that it will help you accomplish this Accountability. We know what accountability is. Find an accountability partner. Find um, you know someone that you trust, that you rely, that you're comfortable with, that is going to help you. You know, remain on task on those goals that you have been, that you have set for yourself, or on those tasks that you need to to get completed for your business. And then you will probably feel a little more obligated and more motivated as well to to work on those and not to procrastinate as much. Find a mastermind. What is a mastermind? A mastermind group is simply a meeting of highly motivated folks who share a common goal and are looking to encourage and help each other improve. So maybe there's a mastermind in your area. By the way, if you're interested in, in being part of our mastermind groups, then just uh, shoot me um, a comment, you know, comment form at our website in our contact form there. And we can set one up remotely as well. We don't need people that are in the same industry. What we need is motivated people with different set of skills and different experiences that are willing to share and motivate each other to help us all improve. And this is something that you can take off a uh, part of uh, voluntarily. Nobody can really obligate you to do that except yourself. If you really want to stop procrastinating, you need to make that decision and decide when it's time for you to take the next, next step and stop procrastinating. We talked about accountability partners, right? Or you know what that is? Again, you want to start running and those 5K just seem impossible, right? Maybe find somebody that is trying to do the same. Maybe find somebody that has already done it, that maybe they are highly motivated, that they have a passion to share what they're doing. And if you need to pay someone to, to help you out with that, but it's worth their time, it might be a high, very, very high motivator for you. Because if it's going to you know, hit your pocket a little bit, maybe you're going to be more encouraged to make sure that you obtain the result. So definitely accountability partners are a great way to improve in your accomplishments for and become more productive in your both your personal and professional life. Coaching, mentoring are also a great way to, to be able to stay on task and avoid procrastination. You need to communicate to your supporters and you need to communicate with your followers. So this is depending, are you a coach or a mentor or are you being coached or are you being mentored by somebody else? 
right? So if we assume that you are trying to improve your productivity and you have the issue of procrastinating, well, just find someone that, who has done it before. Find someone that is successful. Find someone that has been able to accomplish things that you don't think are capable, you know, you will be capable of. They will show you how. People are more than willing to share what they know. When somebody humbly comes in and, and asks them, people are very generous and you will be surprised. Just flip every stone. So what is your homework? Your homework is to try to think, what are the reasons why you're procrastinating? Are you just being lazy? Are you having the problem with the big project? Are you having a different type of problem that is making you procrastinate? Are you a perfectionist? Just think, what is that reason? Try to think of why that's happening to you. And now try to find a solution for each one. We're gonna be providing more resources along these 10 classes and, and we are pretty sure that you will be able to learn and improve. And the real scenario is that you are the only one that can decide to change and stop being a procrastinator and you can champion getting things done with the right techniques, with the right mindset, with the right motivation, with the right enthusiasm, if you are just smart about it and decide that now is the time to do it and don't wait any longer. All right, so that will complete our third class. We invite you again to, to join our tribu, our tribe of entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs. And please don't forget to let someone you know who could benefit from these lessons, okay? Part of our success is also gonna be by sharing by passing what is happening that is good for us into others. And that's how you gain, that's how you win, that's how you build a community, that's how you build more friendships, and that's how you expand your network authentically and organically. All right, we'll see you in the next class. Take care.